Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines, protests continue in downtown San Antonio, but law enforcement officials are saying they're having fewer problems with protesters. The three remaining officers in the George Floyd case taken into custody. I'm Inez de la in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Taking a look outside with live cam. It is muggy this morning. You can feel the heat when you open your front door. Mike will let you know about your forecast in just a bit. And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is June 4th, and yeah, we're only down at right now to about 76 degrees. Not much of a temperature drop overnight. No, and it was just steamy. Mm -hmm. Side. Get ready. <laughs> it's going to be getting hotter as we go on in through the weekend Can't and wait. first of next week. Yeah, so we are talking maybe by the first of next week near record high temperatures. And this time of year, when you talk records, you're talking well up into the triple digits. So anyway, yeah, look at the humidity just hanging around there. Uh, it's it's almost wet towel kind of humidity when you step outside this morning. And yes, temperatures are still about four or five, six degrees above normal. Actually, when you kind of take in the, the big picture here, Everybody is up at least a couple of degrees uh, compared to this time yesterday. And as far as uh, mold, it is on the high side. A little bit of grass is showing up. Uh, temperature is going to make it up to 86 today at noon. 92 for high. The normal high is right around 90. So, you know, within a couple of degrees, it's not bad. Of course, with the, uh, the heat index, you look at about mid 90s is what it's going to be feeling like. We'll have clouds this morning and then more sunshine later on today. That's going to be the pattern we see, you know, that that usual kind of 24 hour cycle clouds in the morning, sunshine in the afternoon. But um, by first part of next week, you can add at least 10 degrees to those numbers. Yeah, closer look at the weekend forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now on this Thursday morning. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone at home. And as we take a look at the highway so far, Things look pretty good, so we're off to a pretty good start in most respects, but we do have something to warn you about. We have a repeat of construction just like yesterday, so we're going to go over to the maps here. Go to Trans Guide. You can see I-10 at the Dominion. We have that construction out there. Everybody forced onto the access road, so just be advised if you're getting ready to head out the door, you will have some slowdowns if you're headed back out towards Bernie uh, from I-10, La Contera area. I-10 at Hoyer Monroe, you can see. They start to <clears throat> blade you off and 35, 6, and 04 up on the northeast side. So far there, no problems. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police are investigating a hit and run crash that happened just west of downtown overnight. Police say just after 10 last night, they responded to a call at the intersection of North Sarsamore and West Commerce. They say a woman was hit by a car that then left the scene. Police say it was a blue Dodge Avenger. SAPD says the woman was taken to the hospital in stable condition. They are still looking for that driver who hit her. And for the fifth consecutive day, protesters took to the streets of downtown San Antonio, protesting racial inequality and the police killing of George Floyd in Minneapolis. But last night's protests were much qu more quiet, were much quieter than the night before. That's when protests got out of hand, when a group faced off with police officers near Alamo Plaza Tuesday. It resulted in eight arrests and two minor injuries to journalists. But San Antonio's police chief says last night's protests were, quote, no trouble and, quote, very relaxed atmosphere. This is an excellent group that I talked to tonight, and they're very supportive of the police, surprisingly, and we appreciate that. I came here to express to them that we do have a curfew in effect for their safety and for the safety of the downtown area, and they were very compliant and very cooperative. This group has been fantastic tonight. The marchers arrived in downtown around 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon and made their way to the Bear County Courthouse, Public Safety Headquarters, and Travis Park. By the time nighttime fell, most of the protesters had left. There was one group that remained at Travis Park until at least 11 p.m., despite a city curfew that went into effect at 9 p.m. That nightly curfew is set to run through this Saturday night into Sunday. Meanwhile, protesters demanding change of what they call a broken system. San Antonio activists say there are plenty of examples of police misconduct in our community. Community members say they want changes to the city's police arbitration contract, which deals with police misconduct. They also want more power for the police city advisory board and a full count on the number of in custody deaths. A January case and investigation broken blue revealed that since 2010, two thirds of fired officers were rehired through the arbitration process. The investigation also revealed loopholes in the disciplinary process. 
Former Councilman Mario Salas says the protests won't stop until people start to see change. We hear this all the time. Well, we're not like Ferguson. We're not like Minnesota. Yes, we are. It's just covered up. Our sense is, is that right now is not the right time to start outlining a, a framework in terms of what we're going to do with the uh, with the CBA. There's still uh, time to work with the council, work with the community on that. The current five-year collective bargaining agreement, or CBA, set to expire in September of next year. You can watch our special Broken Blue on KSAT.com, where you can learn more about what our investigators uncovered. Meanwhile, all four officers involved in the killing of George Floyd are now arrested and charged. It's something protesters have been pushing for for over a week. Plus, now a new autopsy report unveiling new details about Floyd's health, including that he had contracted COVID-19 but was asymptomatic. ABC's N.S. Delacuatera is in Washington this morning with updates. This morning, a step towards justice. All four officers have been charged! Yeah! This crowd in Minneapolis erupting as word spread that all four fired Minneapolis police officers are now charged in connection to George Floyd's death. We got all four! Yeah, we got all four! Derek Chauvin, the officer seen with his knee on Floyd's neck, now facing upgraded second and third degree murder, along with manslaughter charges, while the other three officers are being charged with aiding and abetting. They need to make an example of these four cops, so these other cops will, will think about doing that again. Tens of thousands still peacefully taking to the streets, arguing they've still got work to do. For African Americans, justice comes in a drizzle, when it should come in a thunderstorm. In Denver overnight, protesters lighting up their cell phones. In Washington, singing to express their sorrow. To lead us. And in Connecticut, a mock funeral procession. People said, why a funeral procession? Why this? It's the symbolism. So it's George Floyd today, but it represents every black man and woman who has died senselessly and unjust. But there were still some clashes. At least 60 people arrested in New York City. In California earlier, peaceful protesters nearly run down after a car barreled through their march. Starting today, a number of memorial services will be held for Floyd around the country. His funeral will be held next week in Houston. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. 437, 76 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, quarterback Drew Brees is getting some backlash after commenting about players kneeling during the national anthem. We'll have those details. And next, Hurricane Hunters fly into Cristobal as it moves over the Mexico, uh, moves over Mexico rather, gets ready for a turn towards the United States. Taking a look outside at live cam, it's 76 degrees, but it is muggy and hot out there. Mike will tell you things are gonna heat up even more this forecast in just a bit. Welcome back. In your morning headlines, the U.S. Senate has passed a bill that gives payment protection plan recipients more flexibility. The measure gives businesses more time to use loan money under the payment protection program. It was designed to help them during the pandemic. It extends the original eight weeks businesses had to spend the loan money to 24 weeks. The measure passed the House last week and now must get President Donald Trump's signature to become law. Former President Barack Obama provided his viewpoint on the, of the protesters in an online roundtable late yesterday. He was speaking to a nonprofit he founded called My Brother's Keeper Alliance. Uh, the former president reminded viewers that the vast majority of police officers are not violent. The former president also says he believes only a small percentage of protesters have acted violently. He believes the Black Lives Matter protests bring honor to the memory of George Floyd and will make a difference. New video this morning shows the inside of Tropical Storm Cristobal taken by a Hurricane Hunter aircraft. The storm is creeping along just inland over Mexico's Gulf Coast. It's threatening to cause flooding over the next few days before making a turn northward toward the U.S. Cristobal is forecasted to be in the central Gulf on Saturday and could be nearing the U.S. Gulf Coast by Sunday. Just ahead, Mike will tell us what kind of effect the storm will eventually have on us here at home. 
Today, the NBA Board of Governors is scheduled to approve the 22-team restart proposal to continue the NBA season suspended by the coronavirus. And the Spurs would be a part of that plan. They will include eight regular season games, a possible play-in tournament for the eighth seed, as well as playoffs that could extend into October. That's all according to ESPN. The plan includes 13 Western Conference teams and nine Eastern Conference teams that are within six games of the eighth and final playoff spot. Besides the top 16 teams, the plan to restart at Disney World in Orlando on July, uh, July 31st. It will include Spurs, Pelicans, Trailblazers, Kings, Suns, and the Washington Wizards. So when it's all said and done later this morning, we'll find out whether our Spurs are back on the court after all. Ooh, exciting. We'll keep you posted. That vote's scheduled to take place around 1030 San Antonio time. Right now, it's 443, 76 degrees. Still ahead, comments made by quarterback Drew Brees regarding kneeling during the national anthem are upsetting some people. We'll have a first look at celebrity reactions. And next, are you getting tired of keeping up with all your passwords? Yes. We'll tell you about some great password managers that can make it easier to keep your privacy super safe. In this morning's GMA First Look, Drew Brees on taking a knee. Just a day after New Orleans quarterback Drew Brees shared this post online, hashtag Blackout Tuesday, where he and millions of others around the world shared their support for the protests sweeping through America's streets. He had this to say about the similar protests taking place in his own league. I will never agree with anybody um, disrespecting the flag of the United States of America. And when I look at the, the flag of the United States, I envision my two grandfathers who fought for this country. With some saying that Breeze needs to be fine with this knee if he's opposed to this one. His own teammate, Malcolm Jenkins, didn't mince words. You're somebody who I had a great deal of respect for, but sometimes you should shut the And coming up at 7 a.m., reaction from athletes across the sports world. With your GMA First Look, I'm Steve Osinzami, ABC News, Atlanta. 447. Chances are you got a bunch of passwords that you use, but remembering them while making sure they're secure can be a challenge. Sure is. That's where a good password manager comes in. 12 on your sides. Marilyn Moore shows us which ones will keep you and your account secure. Remembering all of your passwords is tough. Making sure each one is unique and strong enough to keep hackers out can be even tougher. A password manager, basically an app or online service, can do it for you. Consumer Reports put some to the test. In our testing, we focused on three main factors, security, privacy, and usability. Security means how resistant it is to hacking attempts. Privacy is how much data it collects, what it's used for, and who it's shared with. And usability includes how flexible the password manager is when it comes to sharing between platforms and devices. With password managers, you only have to remember one password your master password for the password manager. That's because they create, store, and automatically fill in complex passwords for the dozens of sites and apps you may log into each day. And these kinds of services use encryption, which means your passwords are scrambled into codes that are hard for hackers to crack. So which one did the best in CR's tests? Our experts say that one password is the best option out there. It was the only password manager we tested that received excellent ratings in all three categories. If you want a free alternative, CR recommends Bitwarden. It scored very good for privacy, data security, and usability. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. You brought up a good point, though, about those password apps. I mean, what if someone hacks into hacks the app? Those. Exactly. I mean, so I keep all my passwords the same for, for everything. Oster Hage, all caps. I mean, so <laughs> Oster easy. Hage. Yeah, easy to remember. I mean, and you know, a little tricky to spell, so it's, you know, not super hard. Too bad it's not a pronunciation password because nobody can pronounce my last name. So. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with Osterhaga? <laughs> 449, let's check on traffic with Marcus. Right now, I'm just going to stay out of that one. Right now. <laughs> right now, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, still <clears throat> not doing too bad out there on the roadway. However, we're seeing a little bit of a slowdown. Now, no report yet of any accidents, but uh, take a look at 410 over on that far southeast side, over by Highway 87, that's Rigsby Road. Those northbound main lanes, we're seeing a significant slowdown leading up to I-10. Now, that could just be due to some construction, or it could be something else. Let's take a look outside through Trans Guide. What do we see so far? Right now, as we uh, take a look, you can see that we don't have any problems. 
35, 604, that's great news. 410 at Austin Highway, you see a few construction trucks moving around. 37 at Fair, only a handful of people, and then 35 in Braunfels has more than enough room right now. I-10 and Callahan, eastbound and westbound lanes are moving along fairly well, but if you uh, take a closer look, you'll see a little bit of smudge to those lights. Could be something or just could be a dirty lens. Could, it, it could, be, <laughs> could, could be both. Mike, quick question. Yes. What are some of the common mispronunciations of your last name? What have, what have you heard at Starbucks and stuff before? <laughs> no, a lot of people uh, use a short O instead of a long O. Okay. Austrian, so. So what you're hearing, ostrich. Aust ostrich. Yeah. Ostrich. Ostr Ostr Ostrich instead of Ostrich. Okay. Ostrich. Okay. Yet, yet they will confuse my last name with the former basketball player, and they pronounce that right. So it's oh, they'll say Ostrich tag. I said no, it's Ostrich. Oh, Ostrich. No, it's. Oh Ostrich. wow. Yeah, it's tricky being you, isn't it? I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Try, try my last so name. Hard. Trujillo. <laughs> yeah. After I trained you. <laughs> huh. Anyway, hey. I didn't look think look that would be tricky either, but okay. <laughs> Austin, and then you got Sarah, who's perfect. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> anyway, beautiful <laughs> picture, and uh, we're going to see some good-looking, uh, good-looking sunset later on today. A lot of clouds hanging around there right now, and as far as temperatures, we have got. Let me do this um, live cam, and you can see some of that haze out there. And yeah, you can. You're going to run into the humidity when you walk out the front door. Temperatures uh, low to mid 60s. Everybody is up a couple of degrees compared to yesterday. Normal low temperature is low 70s here in town, so about five degrees above normal. And these numbers remain in the upper 60s and low 70s. The dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere. 72, you're getting up there. 73, yeah. And then you hit 75. And I know 2 degrees doesn't seem like a lot, but it sure does. You get those dew points of 75, windows, your glasses fog up. You know, windows start dripping, things like that because of all the uh, the humidity out there. We do, though, have very dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, and that's why we've been enjoying some really beautiful blue skies. Now, we had, obviously, some clouds hanging around yesterday, but just, I mean, a couple of holes in the clouds, and then you got the beautiful blue skies, and that's what we will be seeing today. Now, as far as the... Uh, rain yesterday. Of course, we did have more of those showers that did pop up. They tried to get in about as far as uh, 35, almost made it, not quite. And that's going to also be the trend the next couple of days. We'll have more showers, a uh, couple of thunderstorms, especially down here along the, the coastal plain. So we keep clouds around this morning, and then we're going to be clearing out later on this afternoon. There's some of those sea breeze, those coastal plain showers, you know, just one or two of them. There's always the chance that one little stray shower might decide to scoot a little further up to the northwest, but that's going to be a very rare type situation. We'll go through again the same pattern tomorrow as well as far as the uh, clouds in the morning and then sunshine in the afternoon. All right, quick check down to the uh, south. There is barely I say barely tropical storm Cristobal because it's uh, over land right now, dumping a ton of rain and it's getting weakened because it's cut off from its its strength, the moisture out here, or the heat in the water. And so it is going to weaken down to just a, a tropical low. Then it's going to get back into the water, the bath water basically of the uh, Gulf of Mexico, and it's going to regain strength. And it's still looking like it's making a line just about straight for New Orleans. So we'll be on the drier side of that. And that's also been talking about going to help to heat things up going into the first part of next week. So 86 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. And then later on this afternoon, mostly sunny skies. Those coastal showers are possible. 92, which is not that far from normal, but a couple of notches up from yesterday. A couple of more notches tomorrow and so forth and so on going into the weekend. So we're going to be mid to upper 90s over the weekend. Lots of sunshine, some clouds in the morning. Low temperatures stay in the mid 70s. Then look at that. We get into Monday and Tuesday. The record Monday is 101. The record Tuesday is 105. We're going to be really, really close to it. Hopefully, that's not a good look. At me. <laughs> Sarah just looked over at me. She's like, what? Fear. <laughs> I've never seen that look. I don't face like before, to so. be hot. I mean, I, I grew up in South Texas. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. 90 is one thing. 100 exactly. is just. That's I'll sit on my porch 95 all day, but 100. Whole different, whole different ball game. Right. Agreed. I agree with both of you. Yeah. Right now, 454, 76 degrees. Up next, the latest on a Netflix series that lets you travel the world from the comfort of your couch. Good morning. 
Glee star Leah Michelle apologizing for being difficult on the Glee set. The controversy started after Michelle tweeted support for the Black Lives Matter movement, and her former Glee co-star Samantha Marie Ware called Michelle out for making her life on the show a, quote, living hell, and accused her of, quote, traumatic microaggressions. In a social media post, Michelle admitted to acting in ways that hurt others and apologized for her behavior. Life decisions. Pizza or taco? These are my life decisions, too. It's tough to travel right now, especially internationally, with many COVID-19 restrictions still in place. But thanks to season three of Somebody Feed Phil on Netflix, you can travel virtually with host Phil Rosenthal to London, Montreal, Marrakesh, and other places. And he tells me when the restrictions are lifted, watch out. I think people are going to go out of their minds when the world is open again. And 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 they're gonna, there's going to be such an appreciation for life and for the world and other people. And, and my joke is that appreciation is going to last two weeks. Season three of Somebody Feed Phil is on Netflix now. And happy birthday, Angelina Jolie. The activist and Oscar-winning actress is 45 today. Also 45, comedian and actor Russell Brand. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. About two till 76 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, the latest on protests in downtown San Antonio as local officials are praising participants for better behavior. Live from KSA 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And making headlines this hour, the latest on an overnight shooting on the southwest side that sent a teenager to the hospital. Plus, San Antonio police say they are now seeing less violence during downtown protests. And if it seemed warmer yesterday, oh, just wait. As you check out Mike's seven-day forecast, he's talking near record-breaking temperatures in the next week or so. Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is June 4th. It is Practice Friday. Thank you so much for being with us. I like that. I've never heard that before. Practice yeah, Friday. It's like my, my thing. That's your thing. Well, let's make it all a thing. And Mike is here with an update on our heat that is really kicking in as we head in the next four to seven days. Yeah. Whoa. Hmm, that's interesting. Is that me? I think that's just the monitor now. Oh, okay. I look snowy, at least in my picture. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, so hey, uh, look at the uh, humidity kind of hanging out there and you can just sort of see it just kind of settling in over town. And when you walk out your uh, front door this morning, yes, you will definitely feel the humidity. Now, as far as any fog, uh, just a, you know, a hint of reduced visibility here and there. However, off to the east, Gonzales just dropped to a half mile visibility zero right now in Beeville. So once again, now we're going to have to be on the lookout for some of this fog to try, you know, to kind of scooch a little bit further to the uh, west like it did yesterday. We were going along throughout most of the morning and then all of a sudden it started getting foggier around New Braunfels and Randolph. So just kind of remember that over the next couple of hours. Temperatures are across the board up about uh, eh, two, three degrees compared to yesterday. We're well above normal right now. High amount of mold, grass is low and uh, mostly cloudy, very warm, very humid, mostly sunny skies later on today. And we are going to be seeing, hmm, I just jumped past right past my graphic for some reason. Anyway, we're going to be seeing temperatures in the low 90s. We hit 90 yesterday. We'll be up to 92 today, which, you know, is still within reach of normal. But then keep adding to it and adding to it. And so, yes, we are going to be up into the upper 90s. And I'm not going to say near record breaking. I'll say near record. Just make it sound a little bit easier to take. So details on the weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything going on out there, Marcus? Well, right now as we take a look, Mike, and I think our clickers are talking to each other right now. So we take a look at uh, the uh, roadways out there. We did find out what this is between Highway 87, which is Rigsby Road and I-10 uh, there on the east side. As uh, folks are northbound on 410 exiting for I-10, uh, right there on the exit ramp, there is an accident. Right to now, I-10 at Hoyerman Road, no problems there through that construction zone, but as we've seen the past couple of days, that tends to get a little bit busy. Sarah? Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, shots rang out over a neighborhood on the southwest side last night. San Antonio police say around 1030, a fight between two men escalated into a shooting. It happened in the 5400 block of Painted Horse Drive, just west of Pearsall Park. SAPD says a 19-year-old man was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Police say drugs and alcohol may have been a factor in the shooting. It, <coughs> excuse me, it was a much quieter day and night of protesting in downtown San Antonio. Protesters took to the streets for the fifth consecutive day to bring awareness of racial inequality following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis. San Antonio police say last night's protests were, quote, 
no trouble. We're here, more importantly, to protect uh, the folks that are out here tonight and to help them get their message across by providing safe passage throughout the downtown area. Early yesterday, marchers made their way to the Bear County Courthouse, Public Safety Headquarters, and Travis Park. By nightfall, most of the protesters had left. There was one group that remained at Travis Park through 11 p.m. despite the curfew that's still in effect until 6 a.m. That nightly curfew is set to run through this weekend. Meanwhile, there have been more than a dozen arrests made since Saturday night's violence. Charges range from criminal trespassing, rioting, and evading arrest. Half of those arrests happened Tuesday night, with many of the others happening Saturday night. But police say they expect more arrests to come soon. Right now, police are still looking for these individuals accused of being involved in the violence on Saturday night. Officers are hoping these images will help them track them down. If you can identify these people, you're being asked to provide Info online at sanantonio.gov. You can also find this story at ksat.com and take a closer look at the pictures as well. It's on our homepage. Leaders at Travis Park Church say they are still picking up the pieces following Saturday night's protest. What began as a peaceful demonstration led to several downtown buildings being vandalized. Investigators say rock-like objects were thrown at the church, which damaged two glass doors. San Antonio police arrested 21-year-old Nathan Abraham Carranza Tuesday after discovering video linking him to the damage. Church leaders say they don't want to pursue charges. Instead, they say they support the movement. We're, we're here to support and, and hope that um Hope that together as a community, San Antonio can really come together, I think, uh, to seek justice, not just for here, but across our nation. Investiga investigators estimate close to $3,000 worth of damage was done to the church. Meanwhile, Texas entering phase three of reopening. All businesses operating at 25% capacity can expand to 50% with certain exceptions. Bars and similar establishments may increase their capacity to 50% as long as patrons are seated. Restaurants may also expand their maximum table size from 6 to 10 people. Right now it's just about 507, 76 degrees. Still ahead, Snapchat says it will no longer promote President Donald Trump's account on its platform. We'll tell you why. And just ahead, what college grads can do now to launch their careers post-COVID-19. Taking a look outside at live cam, it's 76 degrees. It is muggy and hazy out there. And will those temperatures go up? Mike will let you know when we come back. Hi, Ted. Right now, this year, more than 3.8 million students will graduate from college here in the U.S. These young men and women will enter the most unstable economic environment since the Great Recession. So what can they do to improve their chances of landing a job? Max Massey has a story. College graduation should be an exciting time, but college grads are now entering a depleted workforce during a global financial crisis amid this pandemic. I had investment banking job um, interviews and um, I had a bunch of interviews set up for the spring and they all got canceled for obvious reasons. Still, there are ways to improve your chances of getting a job when it all ends. First, start online networking now. Between 70 and 80% of jobs get filled directly through personal referrals. Introduce yourself and request a virtual coffee meeting with the potential connection. Also, create a professional presence on social media. Companies will be turning to these platforms more than ever and continue to find ways to learn. Online courses may be a good way to get more knowledge and experience in your field while you stay at home. Also, look at companies that aren't as affected by the current economy, such as delivery companies and the healthcare industry, telecommunications businesses, and grocery outlets. And embrace opportunities to perform remote work. Other obstacles that recent college grads might face is that we're not seeing a lot of in-person job fairs recently and a lot of companies no longer offering internships. That's why it is so important to reach out to possible jobs online. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Yeah, as all this was starting, my son was saying, hey, where should I go work now that I'm home from college early? And I was like, hey, man, follow the smiley, smiley face. Amazon Warehouse. There you go. Yep, it's worked out. 512 right now, 76 degrees. Having trouble getting sleep coming up, we'll tell you about some hidden sources of caffeine that may be the culprit behind your tossing and turning at night. And next, Snapchat versus the president. Why the video sharing app has decided to stop promoting President Trump's account.
Proof I can fight moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis. Proof I can fight psoriatic arthritis. With Humira. Proof of less joint pain. And clearer skin in PSA. Humira targets and blocks a source of inflammation that contributes to joint pain and irreversible damage. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections. Serious and sometimes fatal infections, including tuberculosis and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Humira is proven to help stop further joint damage. Want more proof? Ask your rheumatologist about Humira Citrate Free. If you can't afford your medicine, Abvi may be able to help. 515 Snapchat will no longer promote President Donald Trump's account on its platform. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in your morning Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Snapchat is no longer highlighting President Trump's account on its Discover page. The company says they will not amplify voices who incite racial violence and injustice by giving them free promotion. The Trump campaign is now accusing Snapchat of trying to rig the 2020 election. Next, Samsung's new hand-washing app is designed for the company's smart watchers and trackers. The app sounds an adjustable alarm, letting you know when it's time to scrub. It also times your washing session and can keep track of how many times you've washed. And do you change your password after a data breach? If you do, you're in the minority. A new study finds that only about a third of us bother to take that step, and of those who do, just 30% choose a stronger password. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Welcome back. Coffee is a quick way to jumpstart your morning and keep you alert at work. However, there are several other foods and beverages that contain significant amounts of caffeine. I'm interested to hear more about this. You consume them at the wrong time, like before bed, and they could keep you up all night. Max Massey reports on some surprising sources of caffeine. You know this? And this are full of caffeine. But did you know while one cup of coffee contains 100 milligrams of caffeine, two pills of Excedrin Extra Strength Pain Medication, you're consuming 130 milligrams of caffeine. Dietary supplements are another source of hidden caffeine. The FDA warns that the recommended serving size of one tablespoon for dietary supplements can be the equivalent of 80 milligrams of caffeine. Trendy waters may have a little more than H2O. Some vitamin water bottles can contain 50 milligrams of caffeine, and the water plus caffeine drink, Aviate, has 125 milligrams of caffeine, an equivalent of two espresso shots. Also, just because there's caffeine in it, a 16 ounce cup of decaf coffee from coffee shops like Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts they can still have about 30 milligrams of caffeine. Other sources of caffeine include yogurts, ice cream, protein bars, and hot cocoa. So if you're looking for a late night snack, avoid these to get back to sleep quicker. Health officials advise that Americans have no more than 400 milligrams of caffeine every day. That's about four cups of coffee. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 517, well, just exactly 518 to be exact. We're going to take a look outside with traffic. I don't know what I'm saying. No, it's okay. It's not exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right now as we take a look at the roadways, uh, things still look pretty good out there. Uh, we managed to get, uh, make some progress on that accident, and there we go. We go from the map over to Transguide. We see I-10 Hoyerman Road. A little bit more traffic out there through that construction zone, but 410 Perrin Bidal, no, that stalled vehicle still there. It looks uh, been there since Tuesday, so... I uh, wonder if they're being charged for a parking rate. Right now, we move over to 21 in San Pedro, north and south on lane, still running smoothly over there by the airport. So, so far, no sign of any moisture or anything else that should slow you down this morning, unless you're outbound on I-10 due to that construction. Yeah, that car has been there a while. I, I didn't know if I was seeing things yesterday, but it's been there. Maybe that's a reserved parking spot. I'm not I sure. Don't I'll have know. to check with the text out on that. All right, thank you. And Mike's got another picture that looks like a painting. Yes, it does. I mean, just something about sunflowers. Love all beautiful flowers like that, but I don't know, just seeing that big, huge, beautiful sunflower, that's a gorgeous shot. Thank you for showing mom's beautiful sunflowers. And uh, temperatures around the area, or should say as far as um, the 
city cam, live cam, and it just, I mean, there's that haze hanging over the area as of right now, and temperatures are in the uh, about low to mid 70s. We're about five degrees above normal, um, and overall up about, say, two, three degrees compared to what it was at this time yesterday. And of course, you got a fair amount of humidity. Actually, the dew point went up, and, and I know it doesn't seem like a lot talking about one degree because last hour is 73 in Port SA, but Boy, when you walk outside with the dew point of 73 and then 74, you will definitely notice the difference. That's when it really starts to get um, kind of like I describe it, wet towel sort of humidity and fog up your glasses type uh, humidity. And same thing, Pleasanton, Castorville, of course, even has a, a higher dew point, so a lot more humidity out there. So yesterday we did have a few of those showers and thunderstorms that popped up here on the coastal plain and then sort of died down. And that's... Uh, possible the situation again today and I think even tomorrow we will have a couple of um, seabury showers out there this time of year really can't um can't avoid that and clouds throughout the rest of the morning. Then we start to clear out later on. So we will have more sunshine this afternoon. A couple of clouds here and there. And again, one or two of those uh, stray showers that are going to be uh, popping up. Same thing tomorrow. This kind of broad brushes things around here. But you know, with all this moisture that continues with the uh, southeasterly flow, even some mist in the morning is possible, not very likely though. And then throughout the afternoon tomorrow, again, some sea breeze, coastal showers, and we'll do it again on Saturday. Kind of that uh, getting into that summertime broken record type situation. So down there, uh, right around the Yucatan Peninsula, there is what is barely tropical storm Cristobal because uh, winds have been weakening since it has moved in over land. It is just dumping buckets and buckets of rain down there. And then it will continue to work its way then back into the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico, regain strength. So it'll probably drop below tropical storm strength for a while, but then come back up a little bit more. And it's gonna work its way through the Gulf of Mexico over the weekend and make landfall sometime. It looks like uh, early Sunday morning or during during the day Sunday and it looks like right around New Orleans, the wet side of the storm is going to be or the rainier side is the right hand side in relation to its direction of travel. We're going to be on the the non rainy side and it's also going to be uh, helping to heat things up because the air is going to be sinking on the back side of that and it's going to get hot. 86 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, mostly sunny then later on this afternoon, 92 high temperature, which is within a couple of degrees of normal. And again, some of those uh, coastal showers are possible out there. Then we get into tomorrow and clouds in the morning, maybe a coastal shower in the afternoon and a lot more sunshine, 94. Keep going up, 95 on Saturday. 97 Sunday, so it's definitely going to be a hot weekend with some humidity thrown in. And then we are looking at 100 by Monday, 104 on Tuesday. The records each of those days, 101 and 105 respectively. So near record high temperatures getting in the first part of next week. So we look at the next electric bill, go, oh, that's where that spike mm. happened. Yeah. 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 Had Can't to bring wait. that up, didn't you? Yes, I did. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 522, 76 degrees. Coming up next in your morning spotlight, a Star Wars actor is making his voice heard at a protest for George Floyd. Let's take a look at all your lottery numbers. Pick three numbers, 805, Fireball 2. Daily four numbers, 2783, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 8, 15, 16, 19, 28. And the Texas Lotto, 8, 31, 36, 41, 42, 47. And Powerball. 1, 3, 26, 41, 64, the Powerball at 17, and Power Play at 2. 525, today in entertainment news, a big concert raises big bucks, and a Star Wars star makes a big speech. Plus, a big film fest reveals what would have been a big list. CNN's David Daniel has more in the Hollywood Minute. That Fenway double play was a home run for charity. Dropkick Murphys say they're streaming out a Fenway live stream concert featuring an appearance by Bruce Springsteen has raised more than $700,000 for the Boston Resiliency Fund, Feeding America, and Habitat for Humanity of Greater Boston. It's very important at this time that we stick together in mind, in spirit, and in body. Star Wars actor John Boyega made his voice heard at a London protest against the death of George Floyd. Boyega told the thousands of people gathered that now is the time to demand racial equality. Protesters have gathered around the world in recent days in solidarity with U.S. protesters and to take a stand against racism in their own countries. Today started out as the best day of my life. 
back here tonight. First show's at 7. Yes! The Pixar pick Soul, due in theaters in November, is one of 56 movies with an odd credential. It would have been an official selection at this year's Cannes Film Festival. The coronavirus prompted cancellation of the famous fest, of course, but that didn't stop Cannes organizers from revealing their list. So the filmmakers didn't get to go to France, but in a way, they were there in spirit. Back home in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 76 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, family and friends will mourn George Floyd at the service today in, the Min in Minneapolis. More on the new charges filed against more police officers who were at the scene of Floyd's death. Plus, former Secretary of Defense James Mattis has some tough words for President Trump as nationwide protests intensify over the death of George Floyd. And more on a new study that shows just how unaware parents are of their children's screen time. Hey, good morning. It's Thursday. It is June 4th. Thank you so much for being with us. And it is a we're officially in June. We it's are hot. and it's warm. We've only dropped down to 76. That could change here at the top of the hour. But Mike is standing by with what is a definitive heating trend. Yes. Now, high temperatures the past couple of days have not been really outrageous. Um, yes, we've had some humidity and so it feels warmer than that. And yesterday we were at 90 today, 92. So within normal, normal being 90 right now. But yeah, once we get into the next uh, couple of days, we are going to start to see temperatures really go up And there. You can just kind of see the humidity and low clouds hanging over the area. Nine miles visibility in Braunfels, seven Castro. So not bad, but just kind of keep an eye on things. Remember at one point yesterday, New Braunfels is going along fairly well and then all of a sudden it dropped to about a half mile or less at one point the visibility did because we've got a lot of thick fog around Gonzales, Beeville. Uh it's down to zero visibility just last half hour in Beeville, and some of this is going to try and edge its way to the uh, west throughout the morning. So just over the next couple of hours, we have to watch out for some fog, especially uh, off to the east of San Antonio. 74 at Port SA, 73 Balverde. Temperatures are up a couple of degrees from yesterday, and the humidity is up from yesterday as well. Molds on the high side and a little bit of grass out there. And throughout the rest of today, 86 at noon, 92 for a high temperature, as I mentioned, which is, again, within range of normal. Mostly sunny skies, a few clouds hanging around there, and a couple of coastal showers and running along the coastal plain. You know, not, not any big deal. Most of us aren't going to be seeing anything as far as rain. Now, 92 is going to seem chilly compared to the long-range forecast. Details on that and a closer look at the weekend coming up. Time saver traffic right now. I'm Officer Marcus Trujillo. What's going on, sir? Well, as we take a look at the roadways, Mike, so far, no incidents out there that should slow you down. We're seeing traffic move well within the normal travel time range. And let's go over to Transguide. 35 at Maine here in the downtown area looking pretty good. No problems there. 410 at Babcock all the way around to I-10 at Callahan. That's uh, right there, the I-10, 410 interchange. And then I-10 and Frio, you can see inbound, outbound lanes. So far, no issues this morning. Mark and Sarah. New this morning, a San Antonio police officer is expected to be okay following a car crash in the downtown area overnight. San Antonio police say around midnight, the officer collided with a red car at the intersection of Pecos, La Trinidad, and Dolorosa. Police say the crash appears to be caused by someone running a red light, but right now SAPD says it's not clear who is at fault. The officer was taken to a hospital with minor injuries. Everyone in the other vehicle is expected to be okay. The first of several George Floyd memorials takes place this afternoon in Minneapolis. As he and his John Lawrence reports, the service comes one day after charges are filed against more police officers who were at the scene of Floyd's death. Ten days after his death, George Floyd will be remembered at a small memorial service at North Central University in Minneapolis. It wasn't justice for what's going on right now. I appreciate everyone showing him some support and love. The Reverend Al Sharpton is delivering the eulogy. Floyd family attorney Benjamin Crump will give a national statement. Let's take a breath collectively for all of the marginalized and disenfranchised and dehumanized people, whether black, brown, white, Red. Floyd's death has sparked protests nationwide, as well as comments from former presidents George W. Bush and Barack Obama. As activists and everyday citizens raise their voices, we need to be clear about where change is going to happen and how we can bring about that change. 
Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin, whose knee was on Floyd's neck for nearly nine minutes, is facing upgraded charges of second-degree murder. Three other officers are also facing charges of aiding and abetting him and are scheduled to appear in court Thursday. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The death of George Floyd also striking a chord with the San Antonio Food Bank. CEO Eric Cooper says the organization is holding an event in Floyd's honor. All of us have a brother in George Floyd who was murdered. The food bank doesn't accept poverty. We don't accept oppression. We don't accept hunger. What we offer is love. Uh, we offer solutions. We offer people coming together to make sure no one feels alone, no one feels afraid, and our community is nourished. Let us nourish those in suffering. Let us be more kind. Let us reach out to the black community and let them know we love. In honor of George Floyd, the San Antonio Food Bank is holding a day of service on Tuesday, June 9th. That's the day Floyd's family will be holding their private services in Houston. According to a press release, the food bank will open up extra volunteer opportunities. That includes a mobile pop-up distribution at Trader's Village for those who want to help out. You can sign up for a shift at safoodbank.org. Here's a look at the latest numbers of COVID-19 right here in Bear County. We are nearing the 3,000 mark of cases this morning. More than 1,800 people have recovered from the illness, leaving 1,067 people still fighting the disease. The number of deaths have in, has increased by three for a total of 78 deaths. When it comes to hospitalizations, 90 people are needing treatment at a hospital. After weeks of being closed, about 100 small family owned businesses located inside Market Square are among those officially reopening. With the COVID-19 uh, still a threat, many of them are taking extra precautions to keep customers safe and visitors as well. For now, the businesses are only open Wednesday through Sunday, 10 to 4. Some say they'll consider extending hours as needed. Unrest and the ongoing pandemic are also impacting other businesses in downtown San Antonio. This is the city's temporary nightly curfew is still in effect through Sunday. Tiffany Huerta spoke with some local business owners about how they're dealing with this developing situation. Well, as soon as we got uh, room to breathe a little bit, it felt like we were shoved right back underwater. A new phase of reopening was announced amid the pandemic, but businesses downtown remain on guard, not only for their health, but any potential for destruction once the sun goes down. It's not the protesters, it's, it's the looters that are really making the worst possible scenario going on. Damien Sandoval is owner of the Alta Vista skate shop located on Broadway Street in downtown. When violence broke out Saturday night, he stayed late protecting his business. We were helping as many people as we could. He's kept his business boarded up to keep up with nightly activity. The temporary nightly curfew and closure at Alamo Plaza has businesses across the street taking a hit. It's very slow for June. What is that, sir? It's a very slow traffic. Daniel Levy is closing up his store early due to safety concerns. Been closing every day by 6 and 7 uh, before the curfew start, uh, just to be sure that the employees and everybody's safe. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. A reminder, to, a reminder to those who violate the curfew face a fine up to $1,000 and up to 180 days in jail. Thursday morning, time check right now, 538, 76 degrees. Still ahead, a closer look at why isolation caused by the pandemic can have an especially tough time on your teens and your household. Plus, former Defense Secretary Jim Mattis has some harsh words for President Donald Trump. More ahead. Taking a look outside with live cam, it's 76 degrees, but it is muggy and hazy out there, and the temperature is supposed to only go up. Mike will tell you about that when we come back. Now 541, former U.S. Defense Secretary Jim Mattis is accusing President Trump of being a, quote, threat to the U.S. Constitution. In a rare statement, Mattis is accusing the president of actively dividing the nation. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the details. This morning, former Secretary of Defense James Mattis tearing into President Trump, writing, we are witnessing the consequences of three years without mature leadership. We can unite without him. In an essay published in The Atlantic magazine, Mattis blasts the president for threatening to deploy the military to crack down on protests in U.S. cities. I am your president of law and order. 
General Mattis writing, Donald Trump is the first president in my lifetime who does not try to unite the American people, does not even pretend to try. The former defense secretary took aim at the administration's decision to disperse peaceful protesters near the White House Monday. The general saying he took an oath to defend the Constitution. And never did I dream that troops taking that same oath would be ordered under any circumstance to violate the constitutional rights of their fellow citizens, much less to provide a bizarre photo op for the elected commander in chief with military leadership standing alongside. In a new interview, the president defended that photo op. I thought it was a great idea, and it was a great idea. Uh, I didn't know if there were people around there or not. Somebody said, oh, they were so peaceful. Well, they tried to burn down the church the day before. Overnight, Trump also fired back at Mattis, calling him the world's most overrated general, adding, I didn't like his leadership style or much else about him, and many others agree. Glad he is gone. But back in 2016, then-President-elect Trump called Mattis one of the great generals. General Mattis resigned as defense secretary in 2018 over Trump's plans to pull troops out of Syria. ABC's Martha Raddatz spoke to Mattis last night. He said enough is enough, that he really had tried to stay out of it, that he really didn't want to directly attack Donald Trump for all this time. I have known him for so many years. I have known him in Iraq and in other uh, real battle spaces, and he is the most apolitical person you've ever wanted to meet. So this is, is really quite remarkable. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. 543, 76 degrees. Up next, we'll look at a new study that shows that parents may not be aware of how much time their kids are watching their screen. Social distancing and home isolation have been hard on all of us. But combining that with missing major milestones during this time, it can really take a toll on teens and their mental health. Our Courtney Friedman has more. Drive-by diplomas, virtual proms. It's been a year like no other for teenagers, and for some, that can be hard on mental health. We're seeing an increase in depression, for especially for teenagers. At Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, Dr. Sarah Lazarus says she's seen a rise in intentional ingestions in the emergency room. Parents of teens especially need to be vigilant. Be on the lookout for any warning signs of depression. I know no one wants to seek medical care right now because they're nervous and um, they don't want to get sick, but our mental health is really important too. And it's important that if you're noticing warning signs that your kids go ahead and seek help. It can just be complete withdrawal. Um, so they may just not want to be with you. And that can also be a sign. Appetite changes are another big one that may be more obvious. Check in with your kids regularly and maintain an open dialogue about their feelings and experiences. And if you're concerned about your child's emotional wellness, ask for help. If your child, no matter what the age is, is expressing thoughts about hurting himself or not wanting to live or wanting to hurt others, that's really a really big red flag in our world. And that needs to there, there needs to be medical care sought. Well, experts say parents should. It sounds like, a, you know, not, what I was going to say was this sounds routine or normal, but some parents aren't doing it. Experts say parents should ask their teen how they're feeling and actively listen, acknowledge their feelings and let them know it's OK to feel them. And if your teen doesn't feel like talking, suggest alternatives for communicating like journaling or other creative outlets. Well, in other news this morning, a recent study suggests that parents are not keeping up with how much time their kids spend looking at screens. The study followed 350 three and four year olds for nine months. Researchers found that two thirds of parents either thought their child spent more time using mobile devices or less time. Only a third of parents got their kids screen time correct. The researchers also say young kids tended to use apps that are meant for teens and adults. Some of the biggest names in the poultry industry are facing price-fixing allegations. A federal grand jury has indicted senior executives from two major U.S. chicken producers that includes top leaders from Texas-based Pilgrim's Pride and, and as well as Claxton Poultry Farms. They are being accused of conspiring to fix prices and big bids on broiler chickens. Those are the chickens sold to grocery stores and restaurants. If convicted, the men could face a statutory, statutory maximum penalty of 10 years in prison and a million dollar fine. Universal Orlando is the first major Florida theme park to open back up. Only invited guests and season pass holders were allowed to enter on what amounts to be a soft reopening. 
Among the new rules at the park are mandatory face coverings for guests and temperature checks. Guests are also now spaced out on rides and for now single riders are not allowed. Universal Orlando officially opens back up to the public on Friday. Let's check traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Marcus? Well, that accident over on the east side, northbound main lanes of 410 as you're approaching I-10. Once again, on the east side, that has been cleared up. Uh, all travel times well within the normal travel time range. Let's take a look at a couple of transit guide cameras. Uh, I-10 West Avenue, or 410 at West Avenue, no problems there. And then uh, take a look, I-10 at Callahan. You can see east and westbound lanes still running smoothly. Still a little glow there to the shot. And then uh, I-10 and Frio, so far, no problems. Mike joins us now, and this is the time of year where when you're talking about temperatures, you, you start to wince just a little bit. Uh, you're a little hesitant to go yes. there. Yes, especially yeah, going into... Yes, to make more room on the graphics for additional digits. That's, that's true. Yeah, that's true. When you pile all those triple digits up next mm -hmm. week. But yeah, we're uh, looking at a pretty good chance at hitting triple digits by the first part of next week. So. And we're headed towards a full moon tomorrow. And this picture, though, is, according to Mr. Olson, 96% full. 96%? Yes. He, oh, he did, he mm, do left. what? Bottom left as we look at it. Yeah. Bottom left corner's missing. Yes, he, he did the math. Thank you for doing the math for us. But um, yeah, just an absolutely beautiful picture there. Great looking. Should be a good viewing tonight. We will have uh, more clear skies later on tonight. We've got some clouds out there as of right now. And just look at the humidity as well hanging over the, the city. As far as visibility, we've got some pretty thick fog off to the east. LaGrange is now down to a quarter mile. Same thing, Gonzales. Uh, Beeville's back down to zero visibility. Pea soup. Still have good visibility here in town, but you got to watch it. Kind of like yesterday. We started off with the fog further off to the east and then started creeping into New Braunfels. And Randolph uh, had some fog. Stinson had a little bit as we approach sunrise and just after that. So that'll be the thing we watch out for again this morning. And with those low clouds and some of the uh, maybe some fog out there, it could be a little mist. So in places, roads may be damp. Temperatures are uh, low to mid 70s. 74 Port SA, 73 Divine, 76 out there at the airport. And humidity, yeah, it's up. Especially you look at Port SA, Castorville, and Pleasanton. 74 is just, I mean, that's really fog up your glasses and uh, yeah, you, you notice it when you step outside and just, I guess, get used to it or grin and bear it, one of the two. So we did have those showers and thunderstorms that popped up yesterday. And then once the sun went down, they sort of fizzle on out right there along the coastal plain. So that is a possibility again today that we may see some of those and heat index readings are definitely going to be up there today. So temperatures will be about low 90s We're going for 92 here in town and then add to that with the humidity. So we are looking at mid and some upper 90s as what it's going to feel like later on today. Uh, the computer model clouds this morning and then later on this afternoon more sunshine mixed in with the clouds. We'll still have some clouds hanging around here and those couple of showers there along the coastal plain. Then we do it all over again tomorrow. It's kind of that 24 hour cycle. We'll have more humidity in the morning and or more clouds in the morning. I should say plenty of humidity all day and then one or two of those scattered, uh, you know, sea breeze showers out there. All right, down to the south. As far as tropical storm Cristobal, it is uh, a very weak tropical storm right now. It's about to drop below tropical storm strength because it did make landfall and it's just sort of moving around here. It's actually moving southeast right now and it sort of lingers and then it's going to take off up to the north. It's going to come back out over the open waters by later on tomorrow afternoon and regain tropical storm strength and then continue basically straight northward up in toward Louisiana, New Orleans. It's almost a direct hit from this. The rainy side is to the east, so we are not going to get um, a lot, if any, rain from this, but what it will do on the uh, west side of that where you have sinking air that helps to really heat things up. So there's a combination of different things, including Cristobal, that's going to help to heat us up going into the first part of next week. 86 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and got a lot of clouds, some of that fog this morning, then 92 for a high temperature today, which is not that far from normal. Of course, it'll feel warmer than that. A couple of coastal showers out there again, one or two on the uh, coast tomorrow as well. Mostly sunny skies, 94, 95. Let's keep going upward 97 on Sunday and looking at near record. I'm not going to say record breaking. That just sounds too final. Um, one, 101 is a record Monday, 105 on Tuesday. It's getting better. You didn't wince that time. You just kind of, you just. Neither did she. Blurt it out. <laughs> Bring it on. Bring the heat no, on. Start, start the show. <laughs> I'm, she I'm was pumped like, up for it too. <laughs> like you saw a spider or something. I know. And we're going to have a group hug here in just a few minutes. Wait, we're not allowed to do that. No, we're Social not. Social distance. Can't. That's right. Okay. Hey, 554, 76 degrees.
Do you need some fresh air? Well, scientists believe they've found the best place to get it, but it's pretty far away. That story is next. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, the latest on the George Floyd case and the nationwide protests. You've seen it, all four officers now charged in his killing. The Attorney General of Minnesota, who will prosecute the case, is with us, live, only here on GMA. Well, scientists believe they have found the world's cleanest air. They say it's located over uh, a southern ocean. That's a body of water that surrounds Antarctica. Colorado State University researchers found the air above a particular ocean remains unchanged by human activity or this particular ocean. There's apparently no evidence of particles from burning fossil fuels, crops, fertilizer production, or wastewater disposal. Scientists in the uh, study described this part of the world and the air over it truly pristine. Right now we are just about 558, 75 degrees. Still ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio. Bad habits seem so easy to pick up while Good habits seem easy to drop. We'll look at some ways to help you keep with the goals you set for yourself. And Marcus will be back with another look at time saver traffic. And Mike's got that forecast that includes near record or perhaps record breaking high temperatures. The community is um, raising their voices and wants reform, and we're listening. And um, you know, the, but uh, but again, there's a, a matrix of. Um, authorities at the state level and at the local level through contract uh, that would that would be needed to change in order for us to reform. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nuremberg acknowledging changes many protesters want to see happen. We'll hear from other activists on what they'd like to see changed. The three remaining officers in the George Floyd case taken into custody. I'm Inez de la in Washington and I'll have all the details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's 75 degrees, it's muggy and looks really hazy. And guess what? It's only gonna get hotter. Mike will tell you about that in just a bit. Yeah, wait a minute. From Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Yeah, what do you see these temperatures? Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is June 4th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. It is practice Friday and it's <laughs> practice. It's going to get hot. It is. We're going to talk to Mike in just a second. But first up, time saver traffic with Marcus. Right now, no accidents on the highway. So that's the great news. As we take a look at the roadways, uh, things moving along fairly well. And we're going to zoom into there 35 and 1604. You can see a little bit busier there than it has been the rest of the week. Some folks may be trying to get out and get everything finished before the heat comes. I-10 Hoyer Man Road traffic in both directions running smoothly through that construction area. Then I-10 410 up there on the northwest side so far. No issues, Mike, and the roads are still dry. Yeah, and watch it because we do have some fog uh, in some areas, and with that fog, low clouds, there could be a speck of mist, you know, here and there, but um, haven't seen any reports of it. But look at that, just, ugh, just sitting on top of the city, all that, those low clouds and that, uh, that thick uh, and that heavy humidity out there. Visibility is still pretty good in the metropolitan area, seven miles uh, at Pleasanton, but then go off to the east, not that far. Gonzales, quarter mile. Beeville, zero pea soup fog there and half mile visibility in LaGrange. The thing we have to watch out for, like yesterday, as we get closer to sunrise and right after that, some of that may start to uh, creep a little bit to the west. Uh, case in point yesterday when New Braunfels was fairly good all morning long and then the, the uh, visibility really dropped down as the uh, commute progressed. 75 degrees now in town, same thing, Canyon Lake, low 70s hill country. We're up a couple of notches compared to yesterday and boy, you will be greeted by the humidity when you open up the front door. Mold is on the high side and throughout the rest of today, 86 at noon, 92 for high temperature, which just on paper, that's within a couple of degrees of normal. Of course, factor in the humidity. Then it's going to feel hotter than that. And then if that's in the shade. If you're on the direct sun, it'll feel even hotter. And yeah, temperatures are definitely going to be going up. Keep adding to that number and uh, add at least 10 to it by the first part of next week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. Mike, thank you. See you in a bit. Protests continue for a fifth straight night in downtown San Antonio. But compared to Tuesday night's yesterday's protest, were calm and peaceful. Members of the community started at to gather at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and march from the Bear County Courthouse to Public Safety Headquarters in Travis Park. The San Antonio Police Department had a presence, but Chief William McManus says everyone has the right to peacefully assemble. 
We are here for the protesters. We want everyone to exercise their First Amendment rights. It was a horrific thing that happened, and uh, we're here to protect that First Amendment right that they have. At the same time, the deputy police chief is saying the downtown community has a right to peace and safety in their own homes. My message to the folks here tonight was that we do have friends and neighbors that live here in the downtown area that also deserve, you know, uh, their property to be respected, the noise level to be respected, and the group is very uh, in agreement. The city of San Antonio has implemented a nightly curfew for the rest of the week in the downtown business district in Alamo Plaza. It will start at 7 p.m. every night in the plaza and 9 p.m. for the rest of downtown. The curfew will be lifted every morning at 6. Leaders at uh, Travis Park Church say they will not press charges against a protester. San Antonio police arrested 21-year-old Nathan Abraham Carranza on Tuesday after discovering video linking him to damage at the church. Investigators say a rock-like object was thrown at the church, damaging their glass doors. But instead of pressing charges, church leaders say they support the movement. We're, we're here to support and, and hope that... Um Hope that together as a community, San Antonio can really come together, I think, uh, to seek justice, not just for here, but across our nation. Investigators estimate the damage to the church was close to $3,000. So far, more than a dozen arrests made since Saturday night's protests in San Antonio. Charges range from criminal trespassing to rioting and evading arrest. Most of the arrests happened on Saturday night and Tuesday night, but local law enforcement says there will more likely be more. And police are still looking for these individuals accused of being involved in more violence back on Saturday night in the downtown area. Officers are hoping the images will help folks track them down. If you can help identify these people, you're being asked to provide information to the city of San Antonio. You can find this story on KSAT.com and take a closer look at all of these pictures as well. Protesters are demanding change to change to what they call a broken system. San Antonio activists say there are plenty of examples of police misconduct in our community. They are calling for a better collective bargaining agreement between the city and police department with stricter action for police misconduct. They also want more power for the police, more power for the police city advisory board and a full count on the number of in custody deaths. A January case at investigation broken blue revealed that since 2010, two thirds of fired officers were rehired through its arbitration process. The investigation also revealed loopholes in the disciplinary process. Former Councilman Mario Salas says the protest won't stop until people start to see change. I hear this all the time. Well, we're not like Ferguson. We're not like Minnesota. Yes, we are. It's just cover it up. Our sense is, is that right now is not the right time to start outlining a, a framework in terms of what we're going to do with the uh, with the CBA. There's still uh, time to work with the council, work with the community on that. The current five year collective bargaining agreement is set to expire in September of next year. You can watch our special Broken Blue on KSAT.com where you can learn more about what our investigators uncovered. It's exactly 6.07 right now in Minnesota. All four officers involved in the death of George Floyd have been arrested and are facing criminal charges. It's something protesters have been calling for since last week. Demonstrators celebrated the news but marched again overnight in their fight for broader change. ABC's Ines de la Cortera in Washington with more. This morning, a step towards justice. All four officers have been charged! Yeah! This crowd in Minneapolis erupting as word spread that all four fired Minneapolis police officers are now charged in connection to George Floyd's death. We got all four! We got all four! Derek Chauvin, the officer seen with his knee on Floyd's neck, now facing upgraded second and third degree murder, along with manslaughter charges while the other three officers are being charged with aiding and abetting. They need to make an example of these four cops, so these other cops will, will think about doing that again. Tens of thousands still peacefully taking to the streets, arguing they've still got work to do. For African Americans, justice comes in a drizzle, when it should come in a thunderstorm. In Denver overnight, protesters lighting up their cell phones, in Washington, singing to express their sorrow. Somebody to me. And in Connecticut, a mock funeral procession. People said, why a funeral procession? Why this? It's the symbolism. So it's George Floyd today, but it represents every black man and woman who has died senselessly 
and unjust. But there were still some clashes. At least 60 people arrested in New York City. In California earlier, peaceful protesters nearly run down after a car barreled through their march. Starting today, a number of memorial services will be held for Floyd around the country. His funeral will be held next week in Houston. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. New this morning in local news, a man in the hospital after being hit by a truck uh, during a fight near downtown. It happened around 2 this morning in the 800 block of North Alamo, where a fight broke out in a bar. The fight ended up on the street outside, and that's when police say somebody hit a man in his 30s with a pickup and drove off. The man was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. A woman is recovering in the hospital this morning after she was struck by a vehicle on the city's west side. According to police, it happened just after 10 last night when the woman was hit by a blue Dodge Avenger in North Zarzamora in West Commerce. Police say the driver of that Dodge fled the scene. The woman was taken to University Hospital, but she's expected to be okay. An inv investigation is underway. And police are trying to figure out what led to a shooting on the southwest side. This happened just after 1030 last night. San Antonio police say it happened in the 5000 block of Painter Horse Drive near Pearsall Park. They say a man was hanging out with some friends when there was a sound of two people fighting and some gunshots. A 19 year old was shot in the leg and was taken to University Hospital. Police tell us they are still trying to figure out what happened, but are investigating the incident as an aggravated assault. 610, 75 degrees. You may all reach for that morning cup of coffee to keep us awake, but throughout the day, you may be eating or drinking caffeine without even realizing it. We'll see the foods and drinks you should watch out for. Landing a new job can be difficult for college graduates and finding a new one in pandemic even more difficult. After the break, we'll see some ways to help you get that first gig. Taking a look outside with live cam. It is hazy, muggy, just not that pleasant outside. Mike, we'll let you know if those temps are going to rise when we come back. This year, nearly 4 million students will graduate from colleges here in the U.S. But these young men and women will enter the most unstable economic environment since the Great Recession. Max Massey has some ways every college grad can improve their chances of landing a job. College graduation should be an exciting time, but college grads are now entering a depleted workforce during a global financial crisis amid this pandemic. I had investment banking job um, interviews and um, I had a bunch of interviews set up for the spring and they all got canceled for obvious reasons. Still, there are ways to improve your chances of getting a job when it all ends. First, start online networking now. Between 70 and 80% of jobs get filled directly through personal referrals. Introduce yourself and request a virtual coffee meeting with the potential connection. Also, create a professional presence on social media. Companies will be turning to these platforms more than ever and continue to find ways to learn. Online courses may be a good way to get more knowledge and experience in your field while you stay at home. Also, look at companies that aren't as affected by the current economy, such as delivery companies and the healthcare industry, telecommunications businesses, and grocery outlets. And embrace opportunities to perform remote work other obstacles that recent college grads might face is that we're not seeing a lot of in-person job fairs recently and a lot of companies no longer offering internships. That's why it is so important to reach out to possible jobs online. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Quarter past the hour. And let's take a look with at traffic. I know, Marcus, anything going on? It looks pretty green out there. It is pretty green, but we do have an accident in the downtown vicinity. So not on the highways, but the downtown area with all the construction we have ongoing is already kind of inundated with traffic. Flores at uh, Alamo, that's going to be right by 35, right there by the post office. We do have an accident, major accident, as it's being reported. Now let's take a look outside through Transguide. I-10 and Dominion start to get some increases in the traffic and then up on the northeast side, 35, 604. Uh, we're also seeing some additional vehicles out there. 10 at Hoyerman Road. Just use caution through that construction zone. Thank you very much, Marcus. So Mark just told me that this picture was uh, shown at 9 o'clock yesterday morning. If but I it's always fun to show it again because... Well, it is because this guy's my new personal hero. He's, yeah. That's pretty amazing right there. So is it... Did he leave off a word right there? Is it to show off to Mark Austin? Probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> More fish than Mark Austin. But, but what I'd heard, Mike, in the fishing world was that Choke Candy was, uh, was doing very well these days, and this proves it. This guy... He's all over the largemouth bass. There's uh, one, two, three, four, f at least five 
decent size, very large bass there. How, now, I'm just curious, how big, like that one on the, in his right hand? Would that Gosh. be what, about? God, that looks like, that, that's a three-plater. That, yeah. Three-plater. <laughs> yeah. Combo um, meal. I suspect it's possible he re actually released these, but that one looks like it's, gosh, that could be pushing 22 inches easy. Uh, those are all pretty good sized bat. I mean, look at the, the mouths on those things. Oh, yeah. Congratulations there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, a nice string of fish. Thank you very much for the Acasac Connect picture. Uh, I'm sure we'll be seeing another one of these similar from Mark coming up after this weekend. So, <laughs> anyway, I wish. <laughs> hey, if you are going to be outside, uh, Saturday is the free fishing day, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. On any uh, fresh or salt water. In Texas. Free fishing yep. in Pub Texas. In public waterways. In public waterways. Yeah, and you can find out more information on our website. But, uh, yeah, see if you can uh, top that picture, folks. We've got a lot of humidity out there this morning, and there is some fog to deal with. Nothing in around the metropolitan area right now, but Gonzales, quarter mile visibility, zero at Beeville, and LaGrange has some fairly thick fog as well. Elsewhere, it's not bad, just hints of it. But we'll have to watch out as, you know, we get in towards sunrise and right after that, where sometimes the fog tends to get a little bit uh, thicker. 75 in town, Randolph as well, 76 now in Castorville, and then dew point temperatures are well up into the 70s in many locations, and then you get into the mid 70s, and that's when it really, really is like tropical rainforest kind of humidity out there. But contrary to that, upstairs in the atmosphere, we've got some very dry air in place, and so that's why we're gonna have, even though it's gonna be warm and humid down here at the surface, Beautiful blue skies out there once we get rid of some of these clouds. 73 degrees, and there will still be a couple of clouds kind of thrown on in, but behind those will be those beautiful blue skies. And uh, temperatures are going to be going from mid-70s up into the low 90s and even some mid to upper 90s there along the uh, Rio Grande Valley. And that's close to normal. I mean, normal's 90, so we're in the ballpark when you're within a couple of degrees. But then you factor in the humidity, 95. Then if you're out in the direct sun, because again, got to emphasize all these readings are always taken in the shade. You get out in the direct sun and you're not feeling just the air temperature, but the sun heating you up as well. So it would feel 10, 15 degrees, even hotter than that. So lots of shades. You saw in that picture of the, the fisherman there, Joe Canyon, long sleeves, hat, glasses, plenty of sunscreen as well. Uh, throughout the rest of today, Clouds this morning, and then later on this afternoon, we will see mixture of sunshine and clouds. I'm calling it mostly sunny skies. Maybe a couple of showers there along the coastal plain later on. And then tomorrow, more clouds in the morning. We see sunshine in the afternoon, a couple of coastal plain showers. And that'll be about it. Sometimes those tend to, you know, one or two of them scooch a little bit further off to the northwest. So there's always that chance, but it's kind of doubtful. Now, down to the south, as far as uh, Tropical Storm Cristobal, it is uh, almost not a tropical storm anymore just because it has made landfall here right around the Yucatan. And it's kind of sitting there. It'll weaken still, and then it's going to get back out over the open waters. Uh, sometime probably overnight or early tomorrow morning regains tropical storm strength and then make its path just about straight northward, right, uh, kind of making a beeline for New Orleans, and it will continue up into the mid-south. So the rainy side of any tropical system is the right-hand side in relation to the direction of travel. So over here from New Orleans off in toward the Gulf Coast of Mississippi, Alabama, even the Panhandle of Florida, more rain there. And we are on what would be considered the less rainy side. And actually, we may see something from this, but it, depending, you know, if it's just scooching over to the west a little bit, yeah, we could see a couple of showers perhaps by early in the week. But uh, as of right now, it looks like we won't see anything from it. Here's uh, the upper level steering winds and this high is starting to build on in. So it's taking that low that was here earlier in the week and pushing on out. That's going to help to heat things up as we go in toward the weekend and the first part of the week. And then here comes Cristobal and it is going to again move just about right up almost parallel to the uh, Mississippi River, pretty much avoiding us and then more high pressure builds on in here and that's going to help to uh, really heat things up. So today we are going to be, it's going to be seasonably hot, 86 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies, and then later on, 92. Of course, it'll feel warmer than that with the humidity. Tomorrow, 94. These are the actual air temperatures, the thermometer readings, not taking into account any humidity, and 95 Saturday. Keep going up into the upper 90s Sunday, and near record high temperatures Monday and Tuesday. The records, each of those highs are within a degree of each of the records. But in perspective, the spring has been pretty, pretty generous overall. You know, we, rain and temperatures. A, yeah, we've had a couple of, you know, hot 
spells, mm -hmm. but it's been you know, like as far, nice and, and as far cool. as we're still well above normal as far as mm -hmm. rain's concerned. So. Yeah, so but I'm just I'm looking for a silver lining here. Getting into a little dry stretch here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Par for the course. 621, 75 degrees. Star quarterback Drew Brees is under fire for his comments about players kneeling during the national anthem. Hear what he had to say in today's GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. in Princess Toast, but thanks to this USP seal, I know exactly what's in my Nature Made gummies. Nature Made has the first gummies verified by USP, a nonprofit organization that sets purity and potency standards. Right now at Macy's, get an extra 20% off the latest summer styles with your coupon or Macy's card. That's on top of already great savings on all the warm weather essentials, like 25 to 40% off polos, breezy tops, and more. This week at select Macy's stores and Macy's.com. Guys, what's the matter? I heard there were fleas out here. And to the ticks. And mosquitoes. Listen up, scaredy cats. We all have K9 Advantix 2 to protect us. It kills and repels fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes, too. In this morning's GMA First Look, Drew Brees on taking a knee. Just a day after New Orleans quarterback Drew Brees shared this post online, hashtag Blackout Tuesday, where he and millions of others around the world shared their support for the protests sweeping through America's streets. He had this to say about the similar protests taking place in his own league. I will never agree with anybody um, disrespecting the flag of the United States of America. And when I look at the, the flag of the United States, I envision my two grandfathers who fought for this country. With some saying that Breeze needs to be fine with this knee if he's opposed to this one. His own teammate, Malcolm Jenkins, didn't mince words. You're somebody who I had a great deal of respect for, but sometimes you should shut the And coming up at 7 a.m., reaction from athletes across the sports world. With your GMA First Look, I'm Steve Osinsami, ABC News, Atlanta. Well, coffee is a quick way to jumpstart your morning and keep you alert at work. I know I've had at least a cup and a half already today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, there are several other foods and beverages that contain significant amounts of caffeine. Eat or drink them at the wrong time, like before bed, and they could keep you up all night. Max Massey reports on some surprising sources of caffeine. You know this? And this are full of caffeine. But did you know while one cup of coffee contains 100 milligrams of caffeine, two pills of Excedrin extra strength pain medication, you're consuming 130 milligrams of caffeine. Dietary supplements are another source of hidden caffeine. The FDA warns that the recommended serving size of one tablespoon for dietary supplements can be the equivalent of 80 milligrams of caffeine. Trendy waters may have a little more than H2O. Some vitamin water bottles can contain 50 milligrams of caffeine, and the water plus caffeine drink, Aviate, has 125 milligrams of caffeine, an equivalent of two espresso shots. Also, just because there's caffeine in it, a 16 ounce cup of decaf coffee from coffee shops like Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts they can still have about 30 milligrams of caffeine. Other sources of caffeine include yogurts, ice cream, protein bars, and hot cocoa. So if you're looking for a late night snack, avoid these to get back to sleep quicker. Health officials advise that Americans have no more than 400 milligrams of caffeine every day. That's about four cups of coffee. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Yogurt has yeah, caffeine? I, I, didn't, I didn't know that either. No more parfaits before bed. For you, Sarah Costa. <laughs> It is 628 75 degrees outside. All public officials in San Antonio addressing the protests after a fifth night of demonstrations will hear what they have to say. And health officials are worried about another outbreak of COVID-19. We'll hear the pleas to socially distance and wear face masks if you go to a protest. We do expect to see increase in infection rates, maybe sometime down the road in a few weeks or so, especially because we do have community-wide transmission going on here. As Dr. Anita Kurian from Metro Health, she's one of many public health officials concerned about the spread of COVID-19 as protests continue in and around San Antonio. 
Taking a look outside with live cam. The sun is coming up, but can you really see it? It's so hazy out there. I will let you know about that in just a bit. Hey, and good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is June 4th, and we turn to Marcus now for an update on time saver traffic. And we still have that accident in the downtown area. Now, the highways look pretty good. However, with all the other construction we have downtown, the accident's one of the last things that we need. So, as you can see, some slowdowns on Alamo Street as you're headed towards 35, and right there, 30 uh, Alamo at Floridas, right there with the post offices. That's where we have that major accident currently in the clearing stages. Now take a look outside through Transguide. Not too bad there. I-10 at Hoyerman Road through that construction zone. Once again, those westbound lanes will be down just to one lane. 10 at Bab or 410 at Babcock looking pretty good and 410 at Callahan, but Mike, no sign of the sun just yet. Mm -mm. Yeah, lots of low clouds out there. At least the, the roads appear to be fairly dry, but where there is some fog, and there is uh, some fog in parts of the area, especially off. Boy, look at that. I mean, we can hardly even see the skyline as of right now because of those uh, low clouds and all that humidity out there. But visibility is still pretty good, although Pleasanton now at five miles. Nine New Braunfels, that's not bad, but just kind of keep an eye out for the next couple of hours because I did keep referring to yesterday when we were doing pretty well, and then all of a sudden the fog started to uh, kind of thicken up a little bit, and there's plenty of it. Gonzales, Beeville, Pea Soup, and Victoria now has a, a lot of fog. LaGrange as well. Temperatures are, well, it's about 5 degrees above normal, and then, the, of course, the humidity just makes it feel a lot warmer than that. Mold is on the high side, and uh, we're going to stay mostly cloudy, warm and humid this morning, and then more sunshine later on today. A few clouds still hanging out there. A couple of coastal showers are possible, although not very likely. We'll make it up into the low 90s later on today, but of course it'll feel like the mid 90s with the humidity and then tomorrow same thing clouds in the morning, more sunshine in the afternoon, getting even hotter tomorrow. And once we go in toward the weekend and next week, sunshine and hot and we are going to be looking at near record temperatures to start off next week. Closer look at the weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Mark. We want to protect people's rights to exercise um, their First Amendment freedoms and, and in this particular case, lift up the voices who are asking for criminal justice reforms, uh, particularly in communities of color. City leaders pushing to reach out to protesters after a fifth straight night of demonstrations in the Alamo City. Mayor Ron Nierberg calling for more transparency and police tactics so everyone knows when escalation would happen. We want to protect their rights. We want to be able to uh, protect people uh, to peacefully assemble. Um, and so people need to know um, what would uh, lead uh, to deployment of crowd control. The city is closing the downtown business district every night at 9 and closing Alamo Plaza every evening at 7. Both reopen at 6 in the morning. The curfews will last until Sunday morning. Well, Metro health officials are reminding those who choose to protest to continue to follow CDC guidelines in order to stop the spread of COVID-19. Metro Health's assistant director says they are expecting an increase in community spread COVID-19 cases after the recent demonstrations. You do have a right to right for your voice to be heard, but uh, make sure you don't, you know, practice social distancing and all the preventive measures that we've been recommending because you certainly don't have the right to um, put other people's life at risk. Metro health officials are urging protesters to stay away from high risk people and get tested after attending a protest. Today up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, the family and friends of George Floyd will hold a memorial. And three former officers involved in Floyd's death will appear in court for the first time. CNN's Camila Bernal is in Minneapolis with the latest. 46 year old George Floyd died while in police custody last week. His death sparking protests across the country and around the world. His family continues to ask why. I'm here with my family. We demand justice. My father should have been killed like this. We want justice. She wanted to know how he died. And the only thing that I can tell is he couldn't breathe. Today, his friends and family will begin to celebrate his life at the first of three memorials. Meanwhile, new charges were filed yesterday against all four former Minneapolis police officers present at his death. Charges against Eric Chauvin were upgraded from third degree to second degree murder. The three other officers involved were charged with aiding and abetting Chauvin and are scheduled to appear in court today. 
Yesterday, Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison said the prosecution would be difficult, but also important. George Floyd mattered. He was loved. His family was important. His life had value. And we will seek justice for him and for you, and we will find it. In Minneapolis, Minnesota, I'm Camila Bernal reporting. And new this morning, we learned that the autopsy report shows that George Floyd actually tested positive for COVID-19. The result comes from a nasal, nasal swab performed after his death. Floyd tested positive for COVID-19 April 3rd. It's thought he recovered from the infection and was asymptomatic. And the result is a remnant leftover from the virus. COVID-19 test results can be positive weeks after the infection has resolved. Preliminary hearings in the Ahmaud Arbery murder case are scheduled for this morning in southeast Georgia. It'll be the first time all three suspects will be together in court. A father and son were arrested May 7th in the shooting death of Arbery outside of Brunswick, Georgia. They face murder and aggravated assault charges for the February 23rd crime. The man who recorded the death of Arbery was arrested last month on felony murder charges. Spurs head coach Greg Popovich says he struggled to explain the events of George Floyd's death to his own granddaughter who saw it on television. He made the comments on an episode of the Ringers Flying Coach podcast. I was dumbfounded. I didn't, I turned it off. And then I thought, should I have left it on and explained it to her? Or uh, how do I explain it to her now that I've turned it off? And I, I made some feeble attempt, uh, but I didn't know how far to go. How deep to go? What age is it? Is it she ready or not ready? And I thought, wow, that's a problem for me. And then I thought, what about a black family? Do you think they have a problem talking to their kids and figuring out what's going on here? Further, I'm currently working. Coach Pop is now on an uh, NBA committee tasked with finding ways to address and end racism in cities with professional basketball teams. New this morning, a San Antonio police officer is expected to be okay following a car crash in the downtown area overnight. San Antonio police say around midnight, the officer collided with the red car at the intersection of Pecos La Trinidad and De La Rosa. Police say the crash appears to be caused by someone running a red light, but right now SAPD says it's not clear who is at fault. The officer was taken to the hospital with minor injuries and everyone in the red car is expected to be okay. An apartment complex near historic St. Paul Square was evacuated early this morning after a fire. San Antonio Fire Department says it broke out at the Baldwin Apartments around 2.30 this morning. That's near Commerce and I-37. They say a curling iron caused the fire, pouring smoke into the building. There was no extensive damage to any of the units, but the water had to be shut off so firefighters could clear smoke from the building. Well, phase three of the governor's plan to reopen Texas is now in effect. Governor Greg Abbott made the announcement yesterday and affects many businesses around the state. Starting now, bars can operate at 50 percent capacity as long as customers are seated. And restaurants can now increase the maximum table size from six to ten people. On June 12th, restaurants will be able to operate at 75 percent capacity. And on June 19th, amusement parks around San Antonio will be able to open at 50 percent capacity. Everyone is still being encouraged to wear face masks. AMC Theaters, the world's biggest movie theater chain, says it has substantial doubt it can remain in business after the pandemic. Right now, the, the theater chain says it has enough money to reopen this summer or later, but they are not sure beyond that. AMC has been forced to close theaters around the world because of the pandemic. AMC admits even if governments lifted stay at home orders, and restrictions, its business would still face problems. AMC has two theaters in our area, one downtown at the shops at River Center and one out in Bernie. Right now we're at 640, 75 degrees. Bad habits seem so easy to pick up, while good ones are easy to drop. After the break, we will look at ways to keep up with the goals to set for yourself. According to a, a recent Forbes article, 50% of people make New Year's resolutions and 80% of us have already broken them by February. Guilty. <laughs> if you have broken yours, there are still seven months left to accomplish it. If you're not sure where you went wrong, RJ Marquez shares some tips on how to build and maintain a healthy habit. Do you have a habit? We walk every day, uh, oh. uh, it's mostly because we got the dog here. Eat a lot of carbs and junk food when you're locked in the house. <laughs> she watches a lot of reality TV. <laughs> 
You shop a lot too. <laughs> I do. Some of the common habits people try to achieve are to lose weight, quit smoking, and save money. Maybe it's time to rethink how to achieve these long-term goals. Try stacking and starting small. When you stack a habit, you are adding the habit to a task you already do. For example, when sitting down to watch TV, do a couple of squats or lunges. That way, you're adding your healthy habit to an existing one. As for starting small, it's better to start that way because the habit is more realistic and you're more likely to carry on with it. The average time it takes for a habit to become automatic is 66 days. If you set a certain time to do the habit, like walking outside always before dinner time, you will make time for it in your daily routine. In the end, if your habit takes a long period of time, be sure to reward yourself periodically. You are better in yourself, and the healthy habits you are instilling are a huge accomplishment. A helpful tactic is to have someone hold you accountable as you should do for them. It would help if it's someone that you see often. Also, if you miss a day, no big deal. Just pick up where you left off. Experts say the first few days seem to make the biggest difference, so try to keep it on track for the first week. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. The NBA Board of Governors expected to approve a 22-team restart proposal. That vote taking place later this morning. It's according to ESPN. The proposal will include the top teams, top eight teams in each conference, and every team within six games of the eighth seed. That includes the San Antonio Spurs, who are four games behind the Memphis Grizzlies. Also means the Spurs' 23-year three-year playoff streak could be extended. The games will be played at Disney's Wide World of Sports in Orlando. That vote set for 10.30 this morning. San Antonio time. We will keep you posted. Exciting news for the San Antonio Spurs. Yeah, it'd be nice to see the guys back in action. I know. Anything exciting happening out there in traffic, Marcus? Not yet. Uh, we do still have that accent in the downtown vicinity, but uh, the highways themselves actually look pretty good. So let's going to zoom in on that map there. There we go. There's that accident. Alamo at Florida is just about wrapped up, so lanes will open up once again. You're seeing a little bit of slowdowns there on the main lanes of 35 northbound there, just passing Alamo. Uh, no doubt those are for folks uh, slowing down to take a look at the uh, flashing lights. But I-10 and Callahan, no problems there. Take a look, 37 in Houston, traveling both directions, still running smoothly. 410 in Babcock, we have a few more vehicles out there on the roadway. However, nothing that will slow you down. And 35 is Cesar Chavez, looking great. There's the airport area. 281 San Pedro, no issues there, and the uh, roadways have managed to stay, well, the highways that we can see at least, have managed to stay dry the entire commute. Thanks, Marcus. Mike, how are you, sir? Fantastic. I, I don't know what it is about the pictures, and they have those little windmills in them. Yeah, yeah. you like that. It, yeah, is it's, it? It's very San Antonio. Well, yeah, and it's almost... <laughs> wah, wah, wah. The good, the bad, and the ugly? <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> anyway, um, good looking sunrise there in Yoko. <laughs> I'm just curious about the choice of uh, music, so. I didn't start night. it. Yeah, thank you, Marcus. All right, uh, sunrise. Well, we're seeing a lot of uh, low clouds and uh, a lot of fog out there, a lot of humidity. Gonzales now, zero visibility. It has really started to thicken up. Same thing with the Beeville and it's Still eight miles visibility in New Braunfels, but that has dropped a little bit. Seven in Pleasanton, so we're going to have to keep an eye out uh, as you get in toward Wilson County, maybe around New Braunfels, that we could see in the next uh, hour, hour and a half, some of that fog trying to develop. 75 in town, 76 New Braunfels is one of the warm spots. Same thing with Castroville. And again, these dew point temperatures, this is where you know, we always talk about 60 being the, the threshold where you start to feel the humidity. Then you get up into the 70s and you really notice the humidity. And then when it's mid 70s, yeah, that's the uh, kind of wet towel, fog up your glasses, everything else you can think of as far as the humidity is concerned. Temperatures today, we are going to make it up into the low 90s here in town, mid and even some upper 90s along the Rio Grande Valley. This is in the ballpark of normal within two degrees. Normal is 90 right now, but we will keep adding to this as time goes on. Plus, you got to factor in the humidity, so it's going to make it feel like about 95 degrees with the heat index, and then that's in the shade. If you're on the direct sun, it will feel obviously even hotter than that. We may have a couple of uh, sea breeze uh, showers later on this afternoon along the coastal plain, and plenty of sunshine mixed in with a few clouds. Clouds will come back tomorrow morning, and then more sunshine in the afternoon. A couple of sea breeze showers. It's kind of that same 24-hour cycle that we will go through the next couple of days. Down to the south, Tropical Storm Cristobal is still just kind of uh, lingering down there right on the Yucatan Peninsula. As a matter of fact, 
It uh, has been dumping a lot, a lot of rain, and it will continue to probably weaken as it stays over land. However, it is still forecast to move back into the open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. It'll regain tropical storm strength, and uh, most computer models, and this is from the Hurricane Center, has it moving just about straight northward in toward New Orleans, and the heavier rain would be on the right-hand side of this path, and it's going to continue up into the uh, Mid-South. Depending on how obviously how close it gets, we may see I mean, some wraparound precipitation from this, but right now it's not looking great as far as that's concerned. So forecast today, we have clouds this morning, some of that fog, especially off to the east, then 86 at noon, partly cloudy skies, and we'll see more sunshine today mixed in with some of the clouds. A coastal shower is possible, 92. But again, add about three, four degrees to that. That's what it will feel like with the humidity. Tomorrow we get up to 94. We continue going up 95. These are just the thermometer readings, factor in the humidity. And then we get close to records on Monday and Tuesday. Records for each one of those days are 101 and 105, respectively. And up and up and up and up. It's going to be close. Yes. 104. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'll make you whistle good, the bad, and the ugly. Seriously, Clark? Yes, I'm serious. Thank you very much, Mike. 651, 75 degrees. Well, closures, layoffs, and struggling are sh and struggling to reopen. Those are just some of the obstacles many local restaurants and small businesses are dealing with. Join us tomorrow on GMSA for Flavor Flaves to see what spots around town are open during the pandemic. Outside with Live Cam, the news you need to know before you go on this Thursday morning is coming up. Take a murky look back towards uh, that haze of the uh, morning clouds in downtown San Antonio. We'll also check back in with Marcus and Time Saver Traffic. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the George Floyd case and the nationwide protests. You've seen it. All four officers now charged in his killing. The attorney general of Minnesota, who will prosecute the case, is with us live only here on GMA. Let's check traffic right now at about five till seven. And right now, as we take a look at the roadways, you can see 281 in San Pedro there. No issues for the north or the southbound lanes of 281. I-10 and Frio inbound outbound lanes still looking great there where the upper and lower decks come back together. Oh, 35 at 410 on the northeast side. No issues for the north or the southbound lanes. Going out a little bit further, 35, 604, still no problems. Mike? Still lots of low clouds, and boy, look at all that haze hanging over the city. We do still have uh, some fog around. New Braunfels is down to 7 miles visibility, so just kind of keep an eye out that it may start to uh, thicken up a little bit like it did yesterday. But then off to the east of Gonzales Beeville, it is just pea soup out there. And uh, mid-70s here in town, well above normal, and 92 for a high temperature today. Add to that, uh, feels like mid-90s with the humidity, and then temperatures continue to go up throughout the uh, rest of the weekend and we're looking at near record high temperatures in the uh, low hundreds Monday and Tuesday. If we yeah. hit 104, does that bust the record or no, the, the record those days? That's each of those forecast highs 100 104 one degree away from the respective records for those days. So oh, hmm. yeah, I just couldn't put record. high temperatures. I understand. So it's going to be hot though. No Mike, Marcus, thanks guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you, see at, you at night. night.